there, my name is Emma and welcome to my channel. I make videos on art, upcycling, and DIYs, so if that interests you, feel free to subscribe. I have been seeing painted candles everywhere lately, so I figured I would show you how to make your own painted candles just in time for spring. This is actually my second time making painted candles. I made some for my sister this past Christmas. I made some with sardines and some with blackberries and then a few cute ones just in case she didn't like the weird ones. And shout out to my sister for taking videos of them because I totally didn't film the process. So you can see, you can get really creative with this. You don't have to do florals, you can do fish oysters, raspberries, anything you want on painted candles. The possibilities for these are really endless. You just wanna make sure that you're using water-based and non-toxic acrylic paint, and you're not getting it too close to the wick for extra precaution. But without further ado, here's how I made these painted candles. To start, you're gonna wanna get your candles and your paint ready. These are just regular tapered candles from Joann's, but you can use any shape, any size, you can thrift them. And then for paint, as I said before, you just want acrylic paint that is non-toxic and water-based. As you saw, I also showed you my source images that I saved on Pinterest. We're doing three different types of flowers. To begin the first flower, and this is how you're gonna start all of your flowers, you are gonna take some green and make some lines, and these are gonna be the stems of the flowers. This is probably the trickiest part, but as you saw, you can use your hands or a paper towel to wipe off off anything that is still wet so if you make a mark you don't like it you can very easily wipe it off it's also super super important that as you're doing this you're using a dry brush that is coated in paint water is going to repel on the wax which obviously candles are made out of wax so that's going to make it really tricky for you to paint so you want to make sure you're using a dry brush starting with your stem and for these flowers they have teeny tiny stems at the bottom kind of teardrop shapes and then as you go up it goes into a little cone shape you're gonna wanna let that dry completely before going in for a second coat. And then you can also add some browns at the bottom and that's gonna make it a lot more realistic. Once all of that is dry, you can go in with some white and yellow. You're pretty much just making a heart shape bigger on the bottom and then as you get closer to the top these flowers are going to get a little bit smaller and everything kind of gets smaller as it goes to the top with this type of flower to add some more dimension to the flowers you can mix yellow and red and go in the very middle of these flowers and that's how you're going to create this you can repeat those steps on the other side again layering and layering once it's dry the next flower we'll do our forget-me-nots. You're gonna do the same technique as before where you're starting with a very thin coat of green and it will get easier after the first coat because it's kind of hard to lay the paint directly on the wax. But once you get that down, again, it'll be a little bit easier. For the actual flower part, you're doing like five petals of blue and white and then tapping just some solid white in the middle. And these are super tiny flowers and you can also do some buds and use some black and green for some shadowing and then the top of these flowers are these little circles that are kind of smaller at the top and then get a little bit bigger and I also added some white to the bottom one so it goes kind of from green at the top to white as you get down closer to the flowers and then you can add some orange in the middle and I like to do these all different heights going all over the candle. The final flower that I did was chamomile. Again, you're starting with the same thing, a few coats of that green. And I don't know if I said this before, but you wanna make sure each coat dries completely before you start adding more because if it's wet you might wipe off the work that you just did so make sure it is completely dried before you add more this has some little leaves at the bottom they're really organic looking and they kind of point upwards and then for the chamomile itself it's kind of like a half circle in yellow with a little bit of red in there and then white underneath 
mostly the petals will be underneath and then you can do like a few little lines at the top but this kind of shows that we're looking at the chamomile from the side rather than the top or the front um, and just gives it some interesting dimension you'll probably only need one to two coats of the flower itself and make sure you're using a lot of paint as you're painting those petals i made sure those white petals were really thick especially because you want them to show up on the off-white candle and to help that you can add a little bit of gray to make them pop just a little bit more and you can also add some white highlights to the middle of the yellow parts and some black shadows to the leaves now this next part is totally optional but if you want to make your own candle holders out of air dry clay they're super super simple i'll show you how to do that so first you're just going to grab some air dry clay and roll it into a ball again this is this is very basic but if you don't have anything to hold these candles in this is a good thing to do and it's also a great Thing to make a gift a little bit more interesting so you're going to roll it out flatten it a little bit and make sure it's really circular as much as you can kind of tapping that top and flattening it out and then once it's the shape that you like it you can get some water and smooth out any funky edges before you actually place the candle in the center so ideally you probably would have wanted to do this before you painted the candles but because this is air dry clay it'll just wipe off so this did not ruin the candle at all don't worry about that but you'd probably want to do it beforehand so i ended up making three of these and i actually let them dry for a few days before I use them so they will shrink a little bit they're super hard um, they will shrink so I used an exacto knife to carve out the center to make them the correct size again just kind of carving it out and then testing the candle to see if it was a better size and then carving it a little bit more because again shrinkage is totally totally normal and you can use some sandpaper to smooth out anything that you don't like once that's done you can grab some paint and just paint the whole thing top bottom sides everything in there and let that dry completely i didn't show myself doing a top coat of clear you know paint or spray but i would add a top coat after this and after you know everything is completely dry because these are so shallow i would use some candle adhesive and just take a little bit of that and then put it at the bottom of each and this is really going to stick the candles to the base and make it so they're way less likely to topple over it's just a good a little bit of extra precaution and now here is the finished product, everything all together. I love how the yellow of the bases complements the flower because there is a little bit of yellow in each flower. These are so pretty, so nice for spring. I would really love to make a bunch of these for my wedding, but I know that I have way too many DIYs I already want to do. But these would make such a great gift and they go so, so well together. I love how they turned out. These candles turned out super cute and I think they make the perfect gift. As I said, I made some for my sister for Christmas and then these three candles I'm going to give to my mom for Mother's Day because when she saw my sister's candles, she was like, I want some. So these will be her Mother's Day gift. I think you can really customize them and make them super personal, which is what makes it a great gift. Or you can make it for yourself. They are so, so adorable. I have to admit though, this process can be frustrating at times, but once you get that green base coat down, it gets a lot easier and you can kind of rotate through the candles as you go letting some dry as you work on others I hope you found this video helpful thank you so much for watching and happy making